This is um, the 43101 a compliant resource, and and for the point for the uh, for the U.S. viewers of this, you should not consider this national instrument 43101 resource as a basis for your investment decision or what have you. It does not comply with SEC SEC uh, determinations of reserves. It's a different category. Um, so this is really designed for for the non-U.S. residents. Um, it and so when you look at it. We did not, in fact, calculate this resource, and I think that's a good point for you to know. Um, Exeter, as a, as a junior exploration company, um, appoints independent engineers. In this case, it was Amec International, which is a major company with offices around the world. They have done the resource calculation independently of Exeter. So. This, is, this does not have any perceived um, company bias in it. It's an independent calculation. AMAC also did the resource estimate for our neighbors, Barrick and Kinross, uh, who are just six miles to the south of us. So you can see here, it's, it's a technical slide. I think um, to summarize it, you can, uh, that there are two zones to Caspiche. We're now looking at the top table. The oxide zone is a zone above the sulfide. It's right near surface, um, and it does not have any copper in it. So when it comes to mining this sort of um, zone, and it's typical of what you'd find anywhere in South America for these deposits, you'd, you'd mine it uh, from surface, uh, open pitting, heat leach type operation. And you can see there's about 1.6 million ounces of gold and 3 million ounces of silver in that zone. Underneath it, you can see the 18 million ounces of gold shown in the table there. And to the right, you'll see the copper at 0.22% at uh, copper, giving you 4.84 billion pounds of copper. Now, these are inferred resources, okay, which is your lowest level of confidence as you make a discovery. Um, the total resource, you can see gold, 19.6 million ounces. You can see the silver at 40 million ounces and on the right hand side you can see what we call gold equivalent ounces. What we do there is we give a gold value to the copper. In other words, for you to look at them independently is harder for you to come up with a valuation than, than if we simply say let's the con convert the copper to a gold equivalent number and how, that's how you come up with 32.4 million ounces of, of gold. This is a common, a common way in our industry of, 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 of being able to then, to then compare projects one to another. Now, I'll show you in the, in the, in the graphics, the, there is a higher grade zone. And the higher grade zone is half of the deposit or half of the total tons. So you can see there's a, a 499 million tons have almost two thirds of the gold and copper for the whole deposit. And that's something that is important from a project development scenario when you might consider let's look at this thing as an underground deposit not mining at open pit at all mining it underground and taking advantage of the fact that you have so much of the gold in half of the total volume and you can see on the slide there's also the comment at the bottom you can compare our resource there uh, that I've just spoken of to what is um, owned to the south by Barrett uh, Sarah Casali Barrick and Kinross, I should say, where they're very similar in size and similar in grades. Funny that. Um, so now let's look at the gold distribution. Now this is, um, uh, on the technical side, what we're sh showing here is a red outline of what the deposit would look at an ele elevation of 4,000 meters above sea level. So this is in as much as the surface here is between 4,200 meters and 4,300 meters, you're looking at a horizontal slice at, at an elevation of 4,000 meters. And you can see the shape of it. We have various terms of what we call this red outline. Uh, I call it a croissant. Some people say it's an incomplete donut. But the fact is that is the shape of the zone as we know it today. And you can see the shape being um, what I described. I'm going to show you what this looks like in cross section. Uh, the white line, the yellow lines across this thing are the drill holes that we have uh, from last season. Um, they don't refer to this season's drilling, which is now underway. It's simply last season's drilling. And the line, the holes are generally spaced 
200 meter by 200 meter centers, 200 meters being 660 feet. So I'm going to look at the, we're going to look at this um, in cross section, uh, taking a vertical slice. But that's really what it looks like. It's about a half a mile by a half a mile across in size. The next slide here shows, in fact, the block model. This is getting much more technical. This is if you take the deposit, like an apple, and slice it down the middle. So now you can look at the deposit internally. So the line on the top, you can see that the wavy line is the surface. And now we're looking at a, at a, at a potential pit. Now, what I mean by that is, you can see there it says Amec Pit. Amec, who is the engineering firm, applied some rudimentary economics to the project to say, could this deposit, does it have reasonable chance of being economically exploitable? And when they applied my, uh, mining parameters against that, and this is, I can have you refer to our 43101 engineering report, it's on the website, they came up with an open pit that goes to a depth of about a kilometer. You can see it there. So you can see the deposit is a kilometer deep, about a kilometer wide, and in red you can see this higher grade zone that I referred to on that chart showing it better than one gram per ton gold equivalent. A gram of gold is worth about $32, $32 US. So if it's better than a gram, it means it's better than $32 in value per ton. If you'd like to know the, the conceptual economics of these, uh, of a comparable deposit, um, in geological terms anyway, you can go to the Kinross Gold website and go to the Sarah Casali project. And there is a 43101 there uh, talking about the economics of mining their big deposit six miles south of us. And it gives you some sense for deposits of this size of what the economics can be. I'm, I'm not saying those are the economics of this one because we don't know yet, but they are comparably comparable geologically. This, in fact, is the drilling, the infill drilling proposed now. And you can see uh, a grid pattern here of squares. These squares are 100 meters on a side. And in purple there, you can see this croissant shape again. But you can also see a whole number of the drill holes that have been labeled from the last season's drilling. Now, if we go to the what we're now showing with the arrows on it, you can see that, in fact, the drilling that we're proposing for this season will do two things. One, it's going to increase our confidence in the deposit because it's an inferred category and we want this higher grade zone to move up to the indicated category. Now, there's two reasons for doing that. One is internally it allows us as Exeter to model the deposit more accurately as from an engineering point of view. But the other point is, from a valuation point of view, there's considerably more value in an indicated resource as an inferred one. Basically, there's more confidence in the integrity, integrity of the deposit. So looking here, the yellow arrow, what it really refers to is that at, at less than one gram gold equivalent per ounce, the deposit is open to the right and to the left in those directions. It needs to be closed off by drilling. And when you look at the red arrows, that's at better than one gram per ton gold equivalent. That's the higher grade zone. You can see it's open to the bottom right and to the left. So the deposit isn't yet fully defined. And that is a priority for us this year, is to fully define the size of the Caspice deposit.